Hey, Barbara Hero Cycling Strong. So I'm here with Shindo from Rotor. And what I've done is I've kind of, you guys know I've played with these quite a bit. I have one on my mountain bike, I have one on my cross bike. Well, this last year, I was trying some different power things out and I had a bunch of power gurus tell me that you do not need an oval ring. Oval rings are actually a waste of time and a waste of money. So I've got several oval rings that I set aside and I started riding something different. So I'm here to ask the question, are they a waste of time and are they a waste of money? And Shindo is gonna answer that for us. So here we go. Okay, so then with the oval chain rings, there are so many, many stories about is the oval chain rings working, is not working. So maybe for some riders it is working or not. One of the keys with the oval chain ring is the adjustable. So then we can adjust the oval to every rider because all of us are different. Our pedal stroke is different, our angles are different. So then in order to get all the benefit with the oval, the important key of that is the adjustable. The adjustability the, of it. The adjustability on the, on the oval. With that, you can get 4% more power output guarantee only because it's oval because our pedal stroke is oval. But that must work with your current position. Okay, yeah. so help the viewers understand how do you find that optimal place? Then? Yeah. Because if you, like me, I put it on there, I think mm -hmm. I'm in the right spot. Yeah. But that doesn't mean i necessarily in the right spot, right? Yeah, you can be wrong on that. I think maybe four or five years ago we were, we were doing this by failing. And that can be good. But right now with all the technology, all the technology that we have, with this power meter, or with the in power, in power or twin power, this is telling you in five minutes which is your perfect position. Okay, so what he's saying here, and I don't know if all of you know this right now, because if you don't, you should. These guys have got, now they've got a power meter that is inside their crank arm. So they have a double power meter in this one, a single power meter in this one. Mm -hmm. So what he's suggesting now is, is that you can take the power meter itself and you're gonna be able to dial in because of your pedal stroke and because it can read on both sides exactly where the cue ring needs to be set. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we are reading the 360 degrees every each degree. So we can really know how is your maximum power angle and where is that and how is your spin scan graph. So then if you can get your maximum power angle, we can know where we want the maximum overlays and that works perfect. Okay, so tell me about your power meter just a little bit. So I've mm -hmm. looked at it a little bit, super cool. They've got a, uh, a, a way to charge right here so you mm -hmm. no longer have to ship it off have it redone. Uh, it lasts for 300 hours. 300 hours on this one, 300 hours on the other one. Mm -hmm. The other one actually runs off a double A battery. Right? Double A battery, a standard battery. battery. Yeah, super cool how it just inserts in here. Mm -hmm. This one though is the one that obviously, if you're gonna buy a power meter right now, I don't think there's any reason to buy a single stage power meter. You need a double on both sides. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna invest the money, you might as well spend the money to optimize what you're trying to do in your training programs. Mm -hmm. So this power meter, talk a little bit more about it. Tell me why mm -hmm. and what's the difference between it. And I'm just going to go right after Pioneer because I believe Pioneer right now yeah. has got the cutting edge power meters. Mm -hmm. So help me out. So then, and one of the different with the other brands, we manufacture everything. So yep. for us, actually, it's yep. really easy to do a high end power meter, really yep. accurate power meter. Yeah because we can place everything inside of our system in our own factory. So then all the electronic and all the batteries inside. And the, one of the main difference and the other ones with double, the best systems are the ones that are separately. Mm -hmm. One power meter in the left, one in the right. We have one in the right and one in the left inside of the axle, measuring the torsion of the gotcha. axle. Mm -hmm. but so one, not just the arm, you're actually, both power meters are in the axle. The string gouges right. for the right side are right. in the arm. Yeah. Right side arm. And the string gouges for the left side are in the axle. I saw, right, gotcha. Because all the power now, goes through. Now, does this measure torque, mm -hmm. like of the bend of this, and yeah. power, or um, just power? We can read power and torque. With our system, you can actually get all the data separately mm. if you want. So, one of the things that uh, this really improve the system is only one battery, one electronic, right. that you can save weight. 
with all of these. Yeah, and we all know how important it is to save weight. <laughs> if uh, we are using any other system separately, the ones that you can read positive and negative power separately, yeah. that it, which is really, really important, they have two batteries, two electronic, two systems trying to keep talking each other and then you can lose inform you can lose information and I need yeah. more. Okay, so what if the battery goes down on this side then mm -hmm. you're dead. The whole thing's dead. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so <clears throat> help me understand the difference between power meters on mountain bike mm -hmm. versus a road bike. Okay. So Basically, in the pre-season, we always. And I'm going to have you talk right to that camera. How's that? <laughs> Basically, on the pre-season, we try to improve our pedal stroke. So then, with this type of power meters, we can get all the information from both sides and try to improve the pedal stroke. For mountain bike, you are not able to improve your pedal stroke in the mountain bike when you are in the trails because it's. It's a little tricky to do that. So then with this, you can get all the information and you can do that in road, indoor training. In mountain bike, which is really good, the power meter makes sense because your efficiency. So we are not trying to get more power or intervals. We right. are trying to do the same trail, spending less power. Right. That means that your efficiency on the bicycle is higher right. and then you can be faster. Gotcha. So then with the power meter, you can read that. Yeah, that's awesome. So the main thing you want to think about is is that road and mountain are two separate things, yet the same, right? But what you're what you're able to do on the road, like I, right now, I can sit and look at my power meter and focus on little things. Cause I'm on the road. I got time that I can sit there, and I'm not worried about you know fighting rocks or yeah. where I am when I'm racing mm -hmm. a mountain bike. So so keep that in mind when you're thinking about power meters. Doesn't mean you don't need a power meter on your mountain bike. That's just, uh, but you only need a single arm on that. You don't need to go as extensive right now as a double. I do believe the future will be double just because people will want the data for fit issues, for cadence stuff, uh, for a left arm output, I mean a right mm -hmm. leg versus a left leg power output to see if they're being consistent between two, two legs on the mountain bike. Uh, a few things like that, but uh, overall, really well put together. I, I like the fit and finish of this. Um, I've never had a problem with the Q-rings. Like I said, the reason I switched was strictly because I don't know what I don't know. And uh, so I went back to a regular, and uh, I, I, I would actually be really excited to figure out and try to test and see if I could be more efficient with the Q-rings. So Yeah, and one of the other things with the Q-rings, which is really important, is not about be faster than all of us. We yeah. want to be faster sure. on the bicycle. But it's about if you have injuries on your knees and if you have problems or even balance, uh -huh. wrong balance on your knees, this really helps that. Oh, really? Because uh, we can go faster and easier through the, the, through the desktop. Right. So then the pressure on your knees is so much lower. That means that you don't have that pain that you had before with the rounds. Oh, very cool. So then you can keep going and keep riding with the oval chairing yeah. and maybe you could not with the, with the round. Yeah. So I think this is an area where obviously I've been looking at because I think it's, I'm not going to say it's easy power to find, but I think it's the easiest place to find power because your pedal stroke is important, believe it or not. And therefore, if you can find efficiency in your pedal stroke, you're going to find more power, and power equates to speed. So, unless you just got a heavy-ass bike that you need to lighten up. But, but bottom line is, I think it's a really cool way to find uh, some extra power, mm -hmm. and it's not that... I'm not going to say it's not that expensive, but if you're looking at a wheel set versus being able to read power, there's not going to be a trainer out there that's not going to tell you to get power over a wheel set. Mm -hmm. Because once you understand power, then that equates to everything in in your overall biking. So uh, thank you for your time. Is there any other thing that you'd like to talk about as far as power or your power meters while this is going I out think, to the audience? Uh, you say something good about the wheels mm -hmm. with a power meter here. We don't need to do so many estimations or calculations because it's direct into right. the arm. Right. If you are reading in the wheel, right. If you got there in the are hub. so many things, right. the chain ring, the chain, yeah. the cassette. Yes. So then you can get a really accurate Agreed. system with this. The other thing too on that is I've never had a, a wheel mounted power meter, but I, it paid in the butt because if you ever want to switch wheels, so if you have a deep dish or whatever, you just can't do it. You're always wanting that power meter on race day where this, you've always can have whatever wheels you want and it works yeah. great, right? Yeah. So, so that's really cool. 
very well done. Like your product a lot. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for your time. You're and uh, if you guys have questions, make sure you're commenting below. We'll get their card. They'll see this video. They'll be able to respond back to you on your issues. And uh, if you're not following the blog, get out there, cyclingstrong.com, and get riding your bike.